Hello everyone. I have my Revel for a little over a year now and if you have watched any of my other videos you've seen some of the upgrades that I've done. In today's video I want to show you some additional ones. Some upgrades that are really small, well actually most of them are really small, and one that is rather big and none of them made it into individual videos. So this video is kind of a wrap up of them all. And here we go. The first one is right here at the bench seat. I didn't like this blue-gray color and I didn't like this fake leather fabric. So I bought some seat covers from Amazon. These are stretchy fabric covers and they don't fit perfectly, but they fit good enough. And I think they look much better, make it much warmer and much, well, easier, nicer to sit on. And you might have also noticed that I changed the looks of the table. This is like a stick on vinyl fake pallet wood kind of decor. And I think it also adds to how warm it looks. This was very, very cheap. Um, I think a 20 foot roll cost less than like $7. And I used the same material to cover the outside of the fridge right here and then the outside of the outside fold down table. So all of this in my opinion looks much much better, much warmer and, and welcoming. And while we are in the bench seat area there's some storage under the seat and I added some of these nettings here, some of these bungee nets to store some small tools. I have a screwdriver in here and, and a few um, hex wrenches in here. And then over here where the extension table is stored, I added some bungee straps so I can better secure the table in place. I also added this little hook here so it's way easier now to lift up this piece of plywood to get access to all the, the plumbing that is under this area. The fridge itself also received an upgrade. I never transport any eggs really or at least not in the shelf up here. So I, I simply attached a piece of clear polycarbonate in here. So now I have something that prevents stuff from falling out if I store it up here. And in this compartment I added a few bungee straps so whatever I put in here has a much better chance of staying in here. Before that it was only held in place by one of these stainless steel rods and now there's well these bungee cords in place. And as far as interior organization goes I also it's hard to see but I added some like clear polycarbonate around the drawers. So I, I don't know, the, the wood is only that tall here, but the drawer itself can be much taller. So I extended the height of the drawer with, with this plastic, and now I can put stuff in here without it falling out. I did the same on the one in the bottom. So this is this clear polycarbonate and it makes the drawer itself a lot more usable. And then for the middle one, again, it's hard to see because it's, well, transparent polycarbonate, but I built some dividers for all my cutlery. So this is just strips of polycarbonate cut to size and then glued together. And up here, I have an extra long one because again, the drawer in the back can be much longer than what the drawer actually is. So this one allows me to store some larger utensils and I can just slide it in here and click it in place. And because it's all clear, I can exactly see what's underneath. And if I have to get to something like the scissors here, I can just take that out and get to it and then put this back in place. And that's it. Another thing I did addresses some of the rattles that I really hate while driving. So the, the rod 
in the bathroom I stored in here. These are just two fittings like PVC pipe fittings and I can slide the rod in here which gives me a little more headroom in the shower. But if I install the rod, I just glued in or actually used some double sided um, adhesive to glue in these. Can you see that these green pieces of like foam material? So if I put the, the, the rod in now, try to do that. It sits in really snug and, and no longer rattle. So, so this just dampens it a little bit and it can no longer move and therefore it can no longer rattle. By the way, I also added some labeling so I know which one is the cold and which one is the hot side. I mean, it's very obvious, it's the standard. It's always cold on the right and hot on the left, but I mean, at home I can just leave the water running as long as I need and, and until hot water is coming out. But here I really want to make sure that I'm turning on the hot. And down here I added a label to, to tell me which way the toilet is open and which way it is closed. Of course if I have it open, that also turns in this yellow LED so I can see from the outside whether it's open or closed but if you're in here and you want to make sure well you can just look at the label and sometimes it's just these little things so over here I just added these two blue dots so if they are aligned then the door is closed and if I move them apart well then I can open it and here in the bedroom area, there's this buckle up here that secures the bed when it's in the upward position. And this was just hanging loose and it created some noise when it banged against the wall. So I added a little bit of stick on Velcro to both sides. And now I can secure it in place. At the bathroom, I added some mirror tiles. This is just very cheap plastic. It is reflective for sure. I mean, it's not a perfect mirror, but it is good enough to see whether I have big blobs of sunscreen in my face. And to get rid of some of the rattles while driving, and I'm not sure if that does a lot, but why not? I added a few magnets, three here, here, and down here. And now the table, or not the table, the cable that holds the table, will be held in place by these magnets and it can no longer move backwards and forwards and make some noise while, while banging against this wall here. I guess every little helps. So the biggest upgrade I did was for sure the Van Compass 2.3, I think, suspension upgrade. With this one, you get a new uh, shock absorber in the back. It's fully adjustable, different damping settings. And it also adds one in the front. So up here, hope you can see that. It adds an additional shock absorber, also fully adjustable with this little red knob here on the side, different uh, dampening settings. And this changed the van quite significantly especially in high wind situations where before there was a lot of swaying, a lot of shaking, that's pretty much gone now. So even when the wind is blowing from the side, and I mean, this is a big profile van and it gets pushed around by the wind quite a lot, but with the new shocks, not so much. So really driving in the wind isn't that scary anymore. Another upgrade I did on the outside is right here. You might notice that it no longer has this ugly Winnebago supplied exhaust sticking out in this area. I did take that off and replaced it with the original Mercedes exhaust, which runs all the way to the back. Comes out here under the rear bumper. And in order to do that, I had to move this black tube, the one that the 
um, the, the, the black water, or sorry, gray water waste pipe lives in. I had to move that to the other side, but that was really easy. All those brackets, they are, can be just reversed. And then I took it off from this side, screwed it into the other side, and that made plenty of space for the original Mercedes exhaust. Another more cosmetic upgrade is right here. I replaced all the Mercedes badges, well, both of them, with black ones. So, so I changed this one from the shiny chrome one to a black one. And I also swapped out the one in the front. I actually bought two new Mercedes emblems, one for the back, this is the one in front. And then I sanded them and sprayed them with a layer of this Rust-Oleum Universal Bonding Primer. And then with a few coats of uh, Krylon Fusion all in one in matte black. And here's a more functional and maybe even uh, safety related upgrade. So under the bed mattress, the, the, the belt runs to, to the motor of the belt down here. It's super hard to see. And there are some screws sticking out. These are the screws that hold this track in place. And they are very pointy. And they can touch, I mean, depending on how much slag is in, in the cable, they can, uh, sorry, how much slag is in the belt, they can touch the belt, or I was afraid that, that they would. So what I did is I replaced those screws, which with much shorter ones and with non-sheet metal screws. So they are no longer pointy, they are rounded over, and well, they are way, way shorter and can no longer touch the belt. So for the next upgrade, or maybe repair, we have to climb up to the roof. This here is the dome for the, for the fan in the shower, and it, it leaked. So I got a really rain shower in my shower when it was raining, but of course, well, that's not a good thing if you're in a van that really doesn't have a rain shower. Um, it turned out that it was leaking over here and I'm not sure if you can see that. So the thing is, this cover has a little channel that when rainwater gets under the cover, the channel catches the water and then it needs to drain out. So that channel has a little drain hole here in the front. That in return means that when this one gets caulked in, there cannot be any caulk obviously around the drain hole. And that was the problem. There wasn't really enough caulking where the drain hole was and water could get in. So what I did is I used a Starbucks straw, this little green one. It's really, really hard to see. It's only like an inch long. I stuck that into the drain hole, basically extending the drain hole out from the channel and then I had enough room around this to, to put plenty of cork in. So water can still drain out, but rainwater can no longer get in and under. Another quick update upgrade is for, for the ladder. I didn't really like how those two rubber ends from the ladder touched the, the back of the door. So, I used two felt pads. These are those pads that you would typically put under chairs and tables. And I, they, they are self-adhesive. So I, I just stuck them to the, to the door. And then I put some, um, this is a piece of old carpet. I wrapped that around the last rung here or this cross member. And that moves the door slightly forward. So those ends here no longer touch the door and if they do well they would touch these felt pads and not the door itself. So the next one isn't really an upgrade to the van itself but still it is something that I find super useful. This is the key for the car, the key fob and I put it on a lanyard. This is something I have never done for any of my other car keys but then again 
This is a camper van and I'm in and out of it a lot. Whether we are parked at the campsite or at the national park, we change our clothes. I might come back from a hike and need to slip into something more comfortable. So there's a lot of extra activity in the van that doesn't usually happen in any of my other cars. And having the keys in, the, in my pants didn't really work for me. I never knew where they were, but now, putting it on the lanyard and wearing it around my neck. I always know where they are. Um, I always have it with me. I never need to worry about leaving it in the car or not having it with me or having it in, in the pants I, I just took off and then stored somewhere in the back. So this is like a, a $5 upgrade. I still call it an upgrade and it's probably the most useful one I did in a long time. It has been cold and rainy for the last couple of days, so I finally thought, well, I have to film this, and I ended up filming it in, in my garage. And now that I'm done filming it, guess what? It's no longer raining and the sun is coming out. Isn't that great? But I'm not gonna film it again. Um, that's it for today. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.